Hey everyone, it's Brittany in the VIP Ceramics Department. Today we're going to go through a video and we're going to create some maracas. We're going to use our basic pinch pot hand building technique and just kind of build some more skills. So let's get started. Right here I have um, about a half a pound of clay and what we want to do first is cut the ball equally in half because we're going to have two halves that we will pinch into a pot and then we will put them together so that we have a hollow form and then we will put small balls inside. So we'll just cut it in half. And if you guys watched the last video, the succulent planter, that's awesome. You're ahead of the game. We're just going to do pretty much the same thing as we did last time. We're going to slowly work this into a ball form, two ball forms, and then use your thumb and support the underside with your other fingers and just press gently into the clay and work around slowly, just slowly thinning the piece out. And again I'm using these parts of my fingers, those are coming into contact and making the clay a little bit thinner and we're pinching in an upward fashion to create a ball form. And just like before, if you're starting to see little cracks along the edges or anything like that, don't panic. We're going to fix that in a minute. So we have our first half. And then when you're making the second half, you want to make it about the same size because you want to have um, kind of a clamshell effect. So the two edges are going to come together. So right now that won't work terribly well. So we're going to keep working on this. Um, again, ideally the pieces will be less than a half of an inch in thickness. Ideally around a quarter to a third of an inch total. And for this particular form, we also want to leave a little bit more clay along this edge and that's going to help us later when we go to connect the two pieces together. We'll just have the, give the clay a little bit more to hold on to. And you can see these look about the same in size and they're the same shape. You could turn this into, say, more of an oval if you wanted. Um, that could be kind of fun because you know then it would fit in your hand or something. You could turn it into a heart or any shape that you want. It's just important to make sure that they're both the same size. So once we have that done, if you have a little scrap of clay from your last project, you can use that to make what will make the noise inside of the piece. So we're just taking very small pieces of clay and just making really tiny balls to put inside. The larger the size of the ball, the more kind of bass sound you're going to have. And the smaller the size, the more kind of a tingy, higher pitch sound you'll have with that. So I'm just going to roll a couple of these. And because I love cooking shows, and because you're going to want to have a good number of balls, I have some prepared already. You'll also want to let the two halves of your piece um, sit and harden for a little while. These have been sitting out for about an hour and that'll just help so that they don't collapse as much when you go to connect them together. Now what we're going to want to do is take this and kind of create a flat edge so that we can connect the two pieces together. So I'm just going to gently get it started by tapping it on my board. And you can see now I have a more flat surface here and that'll be great for connecting the pieces together. And then we'll do the other one. Just 
letting it drop. I'm not really pushing it. You don't want to push it or you'll flatten your piece. But now we have our two halves and we will be connecting them. Now at this point, you don't want to forget that you need to put these inside. And because we're not scoring and slipping these little balls, we do not have to worry about them sticking to the inside of the piece. And this will also demonstrate to you how important it is to score and slip your pieces because those aren't gonna stick to one another. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our scoring tool. This might be your um, plastic fork or I really like using uh, this plastic comb that I cut apart. Um, one of my favorite cheap scoring tools. Or in a pinch, you can use a toothpick. It's just gonna take you a lot longer. So we'll just work all the way around the edge, just roughing that surface up to make a good connection point. And that one looks pretty good. And then we'll do the other side. Now we'll take our water or slip or whatever you have um, and a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush, you can just use your finger. You don't have to get it super wet, just a little bit. And this will help the clay to bond together. And we'll do this on both sides. Okay. So now we're ready to put these two pieces together and just like this. And I'm just gently pushing the clay together. And once you see that you have a good connection and you can't really see any dark spots, um, you can move on to the next part and you can use a variety of things to do this. You could use your fingernail. Um, and what you're doing is you're just slowly marrying those pieces together. Or if you have your plastic spoon, this would work really great too. And just work your way around. We're just trying to get rid of that line where the two pieces are being merged together. You'd also use a flat edge, use the flat edge of this too. Um, whatever, whatever seems to be working best for you. And then I'm also going to go back around in the opposite direction and I'm pushing. So I pulled the clay up and now I'm going to push the clay back down. Just to help make a really good connection between the two halves. And now at this point, we can just slowly work around, smooth this out. Um, it's gonna feel like a ball, so you can also reform the piece a little bit here. Mine was more of an oval before. Now it's more of a ball. Um, there's air inside of it, so it's almost like a balloon. I'm gonna put it back into that kind of oval shape that I had before. Get those cracks out. And then at this point, if you have any rubber stamps at home or you went outside and found a pine cone or if you want to use, I don't know, the, the fork to make some texture marks on your piece, uh, now would be a great time to do that. You can also draw on it, anything that you would like. Um, this is from our studio. It's just a piece of clay. It's been fired and I'm just going to use it to make a pattern all the way around and this does have a little bit of give to it so you don't want to push too hard and 
or it might collapse on itself. And I'll just keep going, working all the way around. The last step and the most important step of making an enclosed form like this, if it's a maraca or say, oh, I don't know, another kind of enclosed form, I can't think of anything. Uh, but for enclosed forms, this has a huge air bubble on the inside and we've talked about making sure that we release the air from the clay with wedging um, and that kind of thing. If I were to put this in the kiln right now, it would explode, guaranteed. So again, most important step, if you have your toothpick or your paper clip or shish kebab skewer or what have you, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take that and make a hole in the piece. And this is going to release all of the air that's inside and it's gonna ensure that the pot does not explode all over the kiln. Well, you guys, that's it for our Maraca project. Thanks for tuning in with me. If you would like information about in-person classes at the FIPS, be sure to visit our website, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.